Matthew chapter 9. Let's start at verse 27. Then I'm going to go back and, and we'll read from 18 to 22. Well, we may read that. We, I'm going to focus on 27. But 27 says, And when Jesus departed thence, two blind men followed him, crying and saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. And when he was come into the house, the blind men came to him. And Jesus saith unto them, Believe ye that I am able to do this? They said unto him, Yea, or yes, Lord. Then he touched their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it unto you. And their eyes were open, and Jesus straightly charged them, saying, See that no man know it. But they, when they were departed, spread abroad his fame in all that country. This message is for someone specific today. The title of today's message is, It's According to Your Faith, Slash My Faith. It's According to Your Faith, or Slash My Faith. Everybody say, It's According to My Faith. It's According to My Faith. Say it again, It's According to My Faith. It's According to My Faith. Now turn and point your finger at somebody and say, It's According to Your Faith. It's according to your faith. Point to somebody on the other side. Say, it's according to your faith. It's according to your faith. Amen. It's according to your faith. Sit down. Amen. <laughs> Sit down. It's according to your faith. It's according to my faith. It's, 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 it's going to be hinged upon what you do with what God said you have or what's yours. And I want to go back, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna, we're going to pick back up on, on 18, because i got to talk about 18 to 22. Uh, I want to start here, and it says, and, and Jesus departed thence with two blind men. Well, let me, let me kind of back up. You know the whole story as it goes. It goes with, with, with the Jesus was coming. Jairus, his daughter, was sick on this particular road, and he, and he asked Jesus to come pray for her. That's how this whole thing started. But in this whole process of this, this, these few verses of scripture, there were three people that got healed. There were three people that Jesus touched in this process. And, and well, actually four if you count the two blind men. But, but, but Jesus was on his way and he had an assignment, but some things started to happen because of the anointing that he was carrying and the time for the people of God to be healed. See, see, that's why I, I say to you, you need to shake some things off because it's always time for you to be healed. It's always time for God to bless you, but you got to believe it and you got to receive it. And you got to keep yourself in a place where God can speak to you. See, that's why, you know, I know God is doing something in this ministry and, and, and God and this message is for me as well. But but see, we, we a lot of times, y'all, we get our minds and, and our hearts all messed up with other stuff that's irrelevant. So you start thinking defeated words, thinking defeated, you know, you start dwelling on mistakes you made in your past. And see, this is one thing, I've said this before, I've said this years ago here. This is why it is so critical, and people don't understand. People find other things to do other than come to church, and you don't realize when you stay away from God, then you're like I said, a chicken on the yard so that the enemy can just pluck you off because you're isolated. He got you. How many of y'all had somebody chase you home when you were school and you were in school? When you get to the door and the family show up, you think they're coming up in there? I told y'all about my family. My brother, my big brother, carried a knife and a gun. He would cut you and shoot you. <laughs> but I'm not serious, because he cut a guy. And he had been cut himself, because he wasn't afraid to fight. But see, the thing about it is, mm, when the enemy's chasing you, when you get to the house, it stops. When you get to the house, it stops. Unless you invite him to come sit down beside you. Come on. How many of y'all know the enemy can come in the house and look real nice and be quiet and good if you let him sit down beside you? Well. 
And the whole time you sitting in service, he's jabbing you in the, in the ribs and saying, don't listen to him, don't, no, 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 no. Get thee behind me, Satan. Jesus wants you to understand. You come to the house, but then once you get in there, you got to open up your spirit and you got to shake mess off. You can't sit up and carry a whole bunch of stuff and expect to receive a word from the Lord. And some of y'all just, you've been, you've been, you, you, you feeling defeated. Now, now listen to what I said. See, I'm, everybody say words have power. Words have power. See, see, you feeling defeated, but are you defeated? No. Not no. your neighbor say, don't trust your feelings. Don't trust your feelings. You feel defeated, but that doesn't mean that I am defeated. You see what I'm saying? You can't, you can't base your life on how you feel. You got to base your life on what God's word says. Because that's the truth. You feel discouraged because you had an argument with your wife. Or you had an argument with your husband. Or you and a co-worker had a disagreement. Or something. That don't stop nothing. You're going to have trouble in this world. You're going to have problems. But your faith and your heart has to be set on the things of God. I can't get no help in here. Y'all, y'all, y'all making me work. Like, okay, I ain't preached in two weeks, but that's all right. I'm back now. Amen. And how many y'all know? Well, you don't y'all y'all don't know, but that's what I tell you. I was praying for y'all while I was sitting on the beach. Yes. Calling all y'all names up. I didn't stop. Everybody called your name from the kids to the adults. Call your name. Cover you in prayer. So you got somebody praying for you, but will you receive the prayers of the righteous over your life? Because, see, I can pray all day long, but it's according to your faith. I can believe God with you all day long, but it's according to your faith. What you going to do? All right, I'm going to get into the word because y'all looking at me a little strange like I'm a new preacher or something, but that's all right. So Jesus said, and when Jesus departed, 27, thence two blind men followed him crying and saying, thou son of David, have mercy on me. So, so on us. They, they, were, they were at a place of desperation because they were tired of being blind. Are you tired of not being able to see in the midst of your situation? Well. Are you tired? Or, or Ah, yeah, yeah, I'll say that. Are you, have you accepted life that this is how it's going to be for oh, me? Wow. See, sometimes that's why you can't go no farther than you're going. It's because you, you, you're okay with being in lack. And you're okay with living how you're living. And God said, no, that ain't what I want for you. But if you don't step over into it, God said, ain't nothing I can do about it. Because it's according to your faith. Yeah. See, that's, that's why I said what I said. And that's why I showed you the rings. Because I'm showing you what God can do. Because I was tired of wearing steel. I ain't y'all didn't get mm -hmm. I always keep me a piece of steel. Yes. No Medea say. <laughs> my work ring is my steel ring, but it was time for us to upgrade. Right. Now, it's just a ring. When I'm dead and gone, somebody else gonna enjoy this. Tamara can put this around her neck and wear it. But the thing about it is, are you tired of being where you are? And are you saying God upgrade me? Are you saying, God, I want to go higher? Are you saying, God, I need more? I'm tired of being blind. I'm tired of living how I'm living. I'm tired of being sick. I'm tired of being broke. I'm tired of going through this same cycle. Because how many of y'all know certain things happen in cycles? Are you tired? Are you tired? Are you tired of living how you're living? But it's, you know what? God said this to me this morning. It's going to take you pressing beyond where you are to get farther. Yes. You're going to have to do more than just say, well, you know, I hope God changed this one day. God said, well, he said, if you hoping I am, I'm not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See, y'all didn't even get that. Because the Bible says faith is the substance of things hoped for. See, if, if what you're hoping for is not mixed with faith, God said, I can't do nothing about it. It, it has to be more than just hope. Yes. 
It has to be you're tired of living how you're living or you're tired of being in a place that you're in and you got to press in beyond that. See, if you're tired of being in disagreement with your wife, you and your wife got to do more than what you're doing now in order to yes. fix that thing. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, I know I'm all up in y'all But do you see what I'm saying? Amen. See what God, 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 look at this. Look, look, go back to the text. It says, and, and, and. Verse 27, and when Jesus departed, the two blind men followed him, crying and saying, thou son of David, have mercy on us. And then 28 says, and when he was coming to the house, the blind men came to him. They came to him. Are you going to go to God and say, look, God, I need you to fix this situation. Until your resolve starts to change on the inside, ain't nothing going to change on the outside. You keep murmuring and complaining about things being the way they are, but will you be like these two blind men? Will you hunt? Mm. They hunt Jesus down. Will you seek him? Will you turn over your plate? Will you do more than what you did? Just, uh, see, see, because if just praying would do it, you would have it. You're going to have to do more than what you're doing right now in order to see God do something different in your life to break those chains. You're going to have to press in harder. Because obviously what you're doing is not working. You don't, you don't have to say it, I hear it. I hear it in the spirit. Many of y'all are believing God for some things, but right now you just, you just kind of like, oh, one of these old warnings, it won't be long. No. If you want to see some change, you're going to have to press in. These men, hunt, they hunted Jesus down. They said, thou son of David, have mercy on us. Where's the passion? Where's the zeal? But Pastor, you don't understand. I've been praying. Yeah, you've been praying, but how you been praying? Come on. Yes. Yes. It's good. What have you been saying? But see, you know what? And that's 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 this is what God said to me. This because I'm believing God for some things. And you know what? And I, I'm gonna share my own personal testimony. There's, there's a couple of things I'm believing God for, and I put them on the scale. And I weighed them in the balance. And I'm gonna show you this in the word. See. See, digging doctor, the first thing I believe God for, no problem. And I felt a total peace in my spirit. The other thing I believe in God for, I felt the end. And Holy Spirit said, how come you haven't believed me totally like you do for the other thing? Well. See, there's some things we believe God just, you know, I, ain't, let me say this like this way. No, no, I'm going to use incorrect English. Ain't no doubt in my mind. I said it, I prayed it, done deal. This other thing, I'm kind of like scratching my head. God said, see, when your faith gets to over here, over here, that's when you have the same kind of peace in your heart and you know it's going to happen. But see, if you question it and you doubting God, or you're trying to figure out how he's going to work some things out, or you're, gonna, you're, figuring, you're, not, you're not really settled. See, these men had gotten to the place where they were settled and said, Jesus, you're my only option. You, you're the only thing that's going to change the situation. You're the only one that's going to take me higher than I, I am right now, and i got to get settled with that. And Jesus, I'm not going to leave your presence until something happens. Mm -hmm. But if you're on the fence, mm -hmm. if you're kind of saying, you know, mm -hmm. God, I don't, I don't know how you're going to do this. Oh. Mm -hmm. God, I don't, I don't, you know what? See, you can't be none of that, y'all. These two men got to a place, even my young people. Young people, you got to understand that you have to believe God with all your heart. You have to trust him with all your heart. You have to totally trust God. And it's not based on your parents. See, you can't live your life on your mom and your daddy's salvation. You got to believe God. Some of y'all getting ready to go to college. Your mom and daddy ain't going to be there for you. I mean, when I say for you, I mean with you. They'll be there for you, but they're not going to be with you. Because you're men. I don't have any girls right now here going to college and get ready to graduate. Oh, well, you, you, Lisa, okay. But I'm going to deal with the men. No, you just, you got, but you're going to have to trust God. You're going to have to really believe God. Because there's going to be some stuff that, see, you know what? You want to hear something? You want to hear something? 
It's up that your mom and daddy had to figure out when they was your age, too. Yes. You got to trust God. And you got a greater advantage than they do. Because you had another place that they weren't at when they were your age. So you got faith, you got God, not saying that God wasn't with them, but you've been walking with God on a whole nother level. And God is, do you know, you hear that, this is for somebody, do you know God is ready always to put us to the test when we'll go ahead and just prove him? God said, go ahead, hey, what, what do you want? But believe me for it, and with your whole heart, come on, watch what happens. Oh yeah, I'm going to say that again. Are you tired of staying where you are? Yes. Come on, sir. These two young men were desperate. They cried out, thou son of David, have mercy. When you get to a place when you stop wishing washing and you just stand, God said, then I can do something with that. Young people say thing. I'm going to say this real quick. Stop, don't stop trying to be popular. Yes. All right. Mm. Hear that. You know, don't, don't try to be the most popular person. That, just trust me. They throw sticks and stones at the popular people too. Because yeah, them same people that's, pop, that, that's lifting you up, making you popular, they the same ones who steal stuff out your locker. Mm -hmm. I've had it happen to them. Because you trust them. Oh, you're so wonderful. Oh, you're my friend. <laughs> as soon as you close your door, look, I like what they got. Go in and steal your stuff. Oh, man, don't worry about being popular. I, I tell you, like, like uh, Jethro told Moses, don't trust nobody. That's right. Pick your friends. Why? Because them same people. Come on, can I get some temptation folk up in here? Same people smile in your face. All the time they want to take your place. They In the name of Jesus, straight up now. Don't try to be popular. Don't try to be, don't. You, you, no, no, no. You got to be comfortable within yourself and you got to walk by faith and believe God. Don't worry about trying to be, have everybody be your friend. I know. I don't have a whole lot of friends. Amen. Matter of fact, that's one right there. One in Atlanta, maybe one other. I mean, close. I mean, I'm talking close, 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 close. Amen. Don't have a two or three. That's good. Because you got to believe God and learn to trust him, not people. Amen. Yeah, I'm going to say that, God, because young people need to hear this. Because, see, if you put your confidence too much in your friends when it's time to believe God, you'll run to your friend before you go to God. Yes. That's right. Yes. These two young men got to a place where they weren't running to anybody else. They were running straight to the source, which was Jesus Christ, who could turn their situation around. Yes. So look, look, let me show you the text. It says... 28 says, and when he was coming to the house, the blind men came to him, and Jesus said unto them, believe that I am able to do this? And they said, yes, Lord. Now, the thing about it is, he asked the question, do you really believe that your situation can turn? And that's what I ask you today. Do you believe, wherever you are, do you believe that things can get better for you? Or do you, are you hoping or are you thinking that it's still a possibility that you might be here tomorrow? Because God said, with man, things are impossible. But with God, all things are possible. So, so, so do you really believe that God can turn things around in your life? Uh -huh. Or are you on the fence? Come on, sir. You got you to gotta, you gotta jump on one side or the other. Jesus told that, that, I think it was a church in the book of Revelation, it was Laodicea. He said, I wish that you were either hot or cold. He said, but if you're lukewarm, I'll spew you out of my mouth. You can't be here that I don't know. No, you need to stand flat-footed on the word. Do you believe whatever you are believing God for? Maybe, maybe it's an addiction. Maybe, maybe it's, it's, it's a, a promotion or maybe it's a new environment. Whatever it is, do you believe that God can do it today? Yes. On Sunday? If you don't believe that, God said, well, see, I, and he said, I can't, because that's, do you know God works in the now? Yes. Even though it shows up later, it's still now, because when he said it was going to happen, it's already done. Yes. There's no in between. God, see, when God tells you that you're blessed and you're highly favored, you're not blessed and highly favored tomorrow. You're blessed and highly favored when he said it. Yes. It's now. Yes. Hebrews 11, 1, and now faith is the substance 
of things. So God operates in the now. But but do you believe Jesus asked these blind men? He said, do you believe that I can do this? And see, he asked the questions before he put his hands on. Do you really believe? Do you believe that Jesus can turn things around in your life? Because some of you, you know, and I see this, and some of y'all I know. I know you. You in these cycles. You in these cycle. You in the cycle. You in the cycle. And 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 you watch. And see, people, people don't, and this is this is what I, I am not one who follow, uh, I've always been against the grain kind of person as far as my thinking. You know, I, I've never been, uh, and I'm just talking about me for a second. I, I've never been the kind of person that follow the crowd. I tell my daughter all the time, the crowd usually follow me. <laughs> it's just been my nature. I've always been, I don't do what I, other people go do stuff because of whatever. I'm going to do what I want to do because that's how I was raised. And other people follow. And, and what I have found, even in my own walk, because I do what I want to do, hopefully encourage people to do what they want to do. Right. And not follow me exactly. See, some people, you know, I know, I know, I know people that go out, one person get a car, they buy the same car. They say, I ain't, I ain't riding in the same car you got. <laughs> I, no, not just, not just saying. Because cause then every time I see your car, I see my car. No, I want to see a car, I'm going to get the car. My car going to be something totally different because I just... And not because I'm trying to be different, it's just because I just want to... See, God, how many of y'all know God created us all to be different and have a creativity in us? Be you. But believe God for more than what you have right now to be even you. Don't walk around following everybody else. What did God give you? What kind of creativity did God give you? That's why I said, kids, don't walk around trying to be popular. Man, be you. And when you, and see, you know what? Once you stop following the crowd, you find out who's not with you. Once you go against the grain, that, you think you're better than it. No, I ain't think I'm better than nobody else. I'm just being myself. Amen. Amen. Let me, let me, this is for the young kids. Let me, I, I'm going to go back to the lesson and I'm going to add a little bit more. Are y'all all right? Yes. yes. I just got a little quiet. I remember when I was uh, in high school, and uh, I'm going to just go back to some of the people around my time. This was, you a little younger than me, so you know. Y'all remember Jordash Jean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 now, if you really had money, you had Sergio Valente. <laughs> Man. Thinking Evans ain't here, but some of us, some of us used to, because we were in this area, they had Cavaliers Men's Shop where you have a whole suit. Everything was the same color from head to toe. Clean it in a bucket of chitlins, I'm trying to say. But, 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 no, no, I'm saying this, I'm going, so I'm making a point. But the thing about it was, see, everybody would go out and they would buy whatever everybody was, you know, was hot. They had to have what everybody else had. Come on, sir. See, because, because I was always a working, I worked. When I was in high school, I had a job. Amen. I went to work. Well, look at this. What I would do, this is just me. Now, everybody got Sergio, Jordas, Gloria Vanderbilt, all them jeans when they first came out. Oh, yes. I would wait six months to a year later and put them on. Now, I don't already paid half the price that you paid because you bought them brand new. No. And secondly, everybody go like, where did them jeans come from? They didn't want everybody had last year. Mm -hmm. I'm just wearing mine now. Mm -hmm. Ain't trying to follow the crowd. See, I wore my Wranglers when everybody else had Jordan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, 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 hold, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. No, no. Let me help you. No, see, you laughing. You laughing. But let me show you. Let me show you. See, but, see, but this is how you do it. You get your pair of Wranglers and you take them to the cleaners and you get them heavy starts and they look just like Jordan. <laughs> Hands start so high that they can stand up by this and you walk away from them. Put them in the floor, them jokers are still standing. I got jeans in my closet right now that ain't never hit the washing machine because they always go to the cleaners. 
I got jeans in there 20 years old because they've always been. Because again, I ain't trying to be like everybody. That's right. That's right. My faith is to be me. My faith is to believe God to do what he put inside of me. I'm not trying to copy nobody else. I'm trying to copy what God put inside. I'm trying to follow the copy that he put on the inside of me. And that's where my faith is. And I want to go to, see, because how many of y'all know there's a whole lot more stuff that's on the inside that he's got copied in there that I haven't even reached yet. I'm pushing my faith to copy, follow the copy on the inside. Be who God made you to be. Stop following everybody else. Stop trying to be popular. Just be you. And if popularity comes, it comes. If it don't, no big deal. But where's your faith? Now, that was just for the young. I had to get something to the young folk. Now, let me go back here. But look at verse 29. What did it say? They said, yea, Lord, in 28. And the Bible says, and then Jesus touched their eyes, saying, according to your what? Be it unto you. He said, he asked them, do you believe that I can change you? They said, yes. He says, and see, and see, do you know, see, this is the thing. This is where we miss it. You know, Jesus said, according to your faith, be it unto you. But if their faith really wasn't there, they never would have got healed. That's right. If they didn't believe, see, because how many of y'all know because the preacher asks you something, you can say, yes, pastor, I believe. But the rubber meet the road when, when the anointed hit, when, mm, there it is, when the anointed hits your faith, will it open up and let God bring forth the change or will it run into a wall? Jesus said, I, I need to see, will you really believe me? Will you really trust me? Yes, Lord. He said, okay, now I can do something if you believe. But even at the last second when the anointing went, because the Bible said he laid his hands on it. So at the moment that he's putting his hand, here comes the anointing, here comes the anointing. When it hit, if their hearts were closed, boom, the anointing would have stopped right there. See, we don't really believe with our whole heart. See, that's why a lot of times we can't see the true blessing and manifestation of things in our life is because we stop believing. We speak it out of our mouth, but in our heart. Okay, I got it. I got it. Go to Mark 11. I'm almost done. Mark 11. Y'all know where I'm going. It says, For verily I say unto you, that whosoever, did I tell you 23? Mark 11, 23. I figure y'all know this by now. You, don't, you need to write this scripture down. Because this, but you know what? And that's, that's what God said to me. This whole message was, or this series that I'm going to do for the next couple of weeks is to stir up your faith. Because you all, you got to hear me. You, you got to hear me. It, 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 the Bible says without faith, Hebrews 11 and 6, it says without faith it's impossible to please God. If you're not going to really walk in faith, but you're going to talk faith, it, it don't mean, see, 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 you can fool me with your mouth, but you can't fool God with your heart. All right, say it. So you can talk, you know, because some of us, you know, we, we know how to talk a good game. We talk it up, you know, you get around. You know, again, we go to church, we've been to Hallelujah, you got people that sound real spiritual, hold it, and they can shout and do all. But see, when it comes down to real stuff happening, hitting your life, see, that I find out where your faith is, because see, you crack up, you start cussing and fighting and doing all this. Oh, I thought you was full of the, full of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> thought you had the Holy Ghost power working in your life. Look like the devil up in there because you're cussing and fighting and ready to go upside somebody's head because you got trouble yeah. over something small. Uh -huh. That's good, sir. So you talk a good game, but where's your faith? Where's your faith? Well, do you really believe God is going to do something or is this church a pastime for you? Yeah. Wow. Is this just something to do? Or do you really, because see, you know what I told God, I was coming, I was riding to work this week, and I said, God, I really want to see the manifestation of things that you promised me. And you know what he said to me is what I told you earlier. He said, well, you're going to have to press harder than you pressing now. You're going to have to go further than you, you if you really want to see me do some things in your life, and you really want to see the manifestation, he said, son, you're going to have to get in there.
How, how many of y'all? How many of y'all know you can go to college and get a four-year degree, but to get your master's or your doctorate, you're gonna have to do something way above and beyond that. You can't do just four years. Oh, I'm, no, you don't get you don't get your master's with just. Oh no, you. But you said, but I'm now. I got I got you know when I was in college, I was my parents paid for it. Now I'm getting my master's and I gotta pay for it. Yeah, it's sacrifice. How much you gonna give up? Yeah. How much are you going to how much are you going to do beyond what you're doing now if you want to see the blessings and the manifestation and you want to go deeper in God? But if you just keep on, if you're just satisfied with living how you're living, that's why ain't nothing changing. I, I want to see all of what God has. So that means I'm going to have to sacrifice more. Sacrifice, do some things that, you know what, that even when ain't nobody looking. That's right. See, see, that's the thing. I'm, I'm gonna say this, and I'm just, and I, I'm just, this is just me. We had the ward ceremony yesterday. Thank God, we were there for I don't know how many hours, several hours. It was long, but it was good. Amen. And thank all y'all for coming, and I appreciate all that. But I still, as soon as I left there, I came here, and I was here for another two or three hours working. That's right. That's right. Stuff that got to get done. Stuff that got you got to again. Are you gonna do more than just you been what you've been doing? And expect God to bless you on a halfway kind of effort, or are you gonna put in the real time to get the real result? That's right. Amen. Cause we just think, cause we got saved. I heard Doctor uh, uh, Hill say that yesterday. We got saved. We think that you know we in, we in utopia. Uh -huh. You know we think we get saved and everything gonna be sweet. No. Now the real work comes. That's right. Now the real demons show up. You think everything gonna be no? You gonna do? You really want to go deep? If these guys hadn't really pressed their way, they never would have got here. Cause soon as Jesus laid his hand, I said the anointing would have stopped right there. Sometimes when people come to the altar, I tell them immediately to relax. Cause if you tense up, the anointing can't get to you. But see, if if the anointing is coming, cause a lot of times when I pray for y'all, I feel the anointing leaving my body. I feel God getting ready to heal your body. But if you shut down, or you like this. How many of y'all know body language is a major part of your communication? Yes, yes. This says, you know, I ain't ready. You don't believe me? I took a communications class. You sit in a meeting, and when you get in a meeting and you see people start doing like this, that means they're shutting down. Fold their arms. But when you relax, when you open your heart, God can move. When you really start believing, God can get in there and do some stuff, y'all. Are you ready? Are you really ready for God to bless you on a whole nother level? Are you really, are you going to do your part by seeking him, pressing, and then opening yourself up to receive that God said, I can do something. Yes. But until you, it's according to your faith. Yes. Amen. How bad do you want God to do something? Go, go back to Matthew, Mark 11. What does it say? 23, what does it say? But really I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea. Uh-uh. My Bible has semicolon. So you can make the statement, but the semicolon said, say it to the mountain, but here's the key part. It says, but shall not doubt in his heart, but shall do what? Believe. Believe those things which he say it shall come to pass. Then he'll have whatever he say. But if you don't believe it, let me say like they say in church, you can't receive. So are you, and I go back to the question that I had. Where are you at? Are you on the fence? Or are you just open and say, God, yeah, I believe you're going to do it. Are you trying to figure out how God's going to work everything out, every detail? You know what he said, but are you really trying to figure out what God, how you going to, God don't need you to try to figure that out. All he needs you to do is believe it then you can receive it. Yeah. Well. If you don't really, but see, you have to, you, you, mm. I, God just showed me this, I just saw this in my mind. Minister Dawn, hear this. She, see, you know, because I, I, she just came, because she does finances and stuff, and they have in the month, what do you call it? Closing and reporting and see because she works in finance Yolanda does too at the end of the month They have certain things that they have to do so in ex in essence they have to have and because again with these systems You got to have certain checks you got to and balances. You know what God said? He said you need to remove the checklist Come on. Come on. 
He said, just go ahead and make the doggone deposit. And just don't worry about the checklist. God said, I got the checks because I'm right. Well, remove the checklist. Remove. Stop checking off everything. Well, God, if you don't do, God says, scratch the checklist and just go ahead and let me bless you. Right. Yeah. Remove the checklist. Yeah. Stop checking God off like you running a monthly report because he said, I don't operate like that. Yeah. All right. Scratch the checklist and let me bless you. Yes. Step into that thing. Step in. God, you know what? Even, see, because you know what? Even if God missed one, he can make it up on the back side. See that? I said, stop, stop, stop trying to check me off. Stop trying to put me in your, your logical system because he said, my system is not of this world. So I'll operate down here. My thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your, my ways are higher in the heaven. He said, so stop trying to put me in a box and go ahead and believe me with your whole heart and then watch me do some stuff for you. I'm just trying to bless you. He said, I'm trying to get you. You want to go higher? He said, but you're going to have to do it my way. You can't try to figure this thing out. You can't, you can't process God in your head. Y'all, he can't be processed. Well, you can't. You cannot. If those guys had done that, they never would have been blessed. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop right here. I hear God saying, many of you, it's according to your faith. You know what? And I'm going to say this too. You, you need to. That, that's why, excuse me, you need to get to a place where you clear your head of all of this stuff that's running through your mind. You don't have no peace because you just, you just your mind just, you, you know what? Let me, let me give you all one, one testimony. While we were on that trip, now, I had good intentions. And First Lady, being the sweetheart that she is. <laughs> no, 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 this was good. We both took up, we got two books that we, we both read in these books that we got. And I said, baby, when we pack your book, yes, I'm going to take mine. And then you know when I got there, you know what the Holy Spirit told me? He said, shut it down. I said, you know what? I ain't even thinking about my book. I didn't even want nothing running through my mind that I had to try to, you know, well, what does that mean? You know, you know how it is when you're reading a book, you're trying to analyze different little points. Holy Spirit said, don't even analyze nothing. And you know what? I sat on the patio. Because, let me, let me give y'all, let me give you the, just the, the this, is, this is what, see, this is why I say peace is good. The patio was right here. But the beach was like from the, to the front door. So I could just watch the palm trees. Y'all remember? On Palm Sunday? I watched the palm trees giving God glory. He said, focus on that. Don't read your book. Focus on the very fact of who I am. And my, you know what? I said, I ain't even going to let my mind get caught up in nothing like that. I just sat and I said, God, you're amazing. Well, I just watched the palm tree because every day we got up, maybe except for one, there was a breeze on the beach and the palm trees were just giving God. Because the Bible says the whole earth is full of his glory. Yes. I'm not even going to See, you need to sometimes shut it down to the point, And when you shut it down like that, then your faith can come up because you're not worried about all the other nonsense. Stuff. Amen. Why don't... Let me say this. I know I'm bouncing around because I'm hearing it. Because y'all got some stuff going on and you're pulling on my anointing and I can feel it. Mm. I'm trying to hit what the Holy Spirit is telling me to hit. Yes. See, 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 many of you all, you got too much stuff going on and, and you can't really even be at peace because you got, so, yeah, yeah, I'm going to say it. You got too much drama in your yes. life. You got too much drama going on. You, you're full of drama. Wow. It's always a theatrical moment. Come on. It is. It is. Because and, and, and you know what that is? That's even in your head. 
you're thinking about this and you're thinking about that and you did it. Well, this is an end, and if somebody says something to you, you're mad and you're all puffed up and and it. Somebody said something to me the other day at work, and I, I can't remember what it was. And I said, you know what, life too short to be, be to, to me to be getting all mad about it. I said, it was, so whatever. Mm -hmm. Y'all, I, I ain't that old, but I'm old enough to know that I, I want to. I want to stay in faith. Well, I want to go higher in God. You know, there's certain things that now I, I said this, and I'm gonna say it again. When I went over to Pastor Allen's church, God has been working in me. It's certain things that I don't even speak out of my mouth anymore. Come on, sir. Yeah. Holy Spirit has been working on me. It's certain conversations that I don't even have about people anymore. Well. My wife can tell you, certain people, you know, they got stuff going on, and normally we would have a conversation. Well, da -da -da -da. you know what? I shut down. You know what? Because I'm trying to get to another level in God. So I got to do more than what I've been doing. I ain't going to keep talking about people that want to stay in the ditch. That's right. Amen. You want to stay in the hole? I'm praying that God gets you out, but I ain't having a conversation about what you're doing. I'm going to have a conversation about where I'm trying to go in God. I'm watching my conversation. I ain't even talking about it. Yes. The guys on the job, certain people come up. And I say this preposterous closing down. I ain't got no conversation, but I ain't talking about it. I ain't entertaining the stupid no more. Yes, How many of y'all know some people like being stupid? Uh -huh. You know the great prophet Forrest Gump? <laughs> stupid is and stupid does. Well, guess what? If you want to be stupid, God bless you. The Bible says if you want to be a fool, go ahead and be a fool. Guess what? I ain't participating in foolishness. Because how many of y'all know time is short? And I'm trying to, I'm trying for my faith to increase. So if you want to sit around and be mad and all puffed up and worried about little dumb stuff, guess what? To God be the glory for you, not for me. Because I'm trying to go from faith to faith and glory to glory. I want more of God, y'all. I want to, I want to see the kind of results that the Word of God said that I can have. And I know the way I've been living, I can't do it. Come on. Uh -huh. right. So I got to change. I got to hunger and thirst after righteousness. I got to seek God and I got to keep my... See, see how many of y'all know you got to hear this? You got to keep your heart clean in order to believe. Yes. Well. You ain't going to have no faith if you got a whole bunch of junk up in your heart. You're not going to the next level. Some of our prayers are hindered because you got too much mess up in your heart. Ooh, Mary. Ooh, Jesus. <laughs> Oh, wait a minute, hold on, let me kill that bug again. <laughs> Got too much mess up in your heart. Yeah. But how many of y'all know if you don't clean your heart, you can't get to, you can't get no more faith in there. You can't, because the Bible, God says God's given every man the measure of faith. So he gives us all faith, but there's great faith, little faith. In order for you to get more faith, your heart got to be clean. Because how many of y'all know God ain't going to give you no more? If you see, and, and, and I hear that, I hear that in the spirit. See, some of y'all faking. You faking like you're spiritual, but see, I find out what's. But see, I ain't the one that you got to answer to. You got to answer to the Father. And if you want to go higher in God, God is saying you're going to have to clean your heart up. Oh, He just said it. You know where I'm going. Is some people you still haven't forgiven and haven't let go of. And until you forgive those people and really let go, God said, I am not blessing nothing. Amen. Okay, let me give you one more scripture. Y'all close y'all Bible, open the back up. I'm fit to close. Hold on. Go back to Mark chapter 11. Oh, you know where I'm going. God said this message was to stir your faith. Everybody say, he's stirring my faith. He's stirring my faith. Okay, here we go. I'm going to give you this, and I'm done. Mark chapter 11, 24. It says, therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire when you pray, believe you receive them, and ye shall have them. Okay, that sounds good. Go to 25. It says, and when ye stand praying, forgive, if ye have aught against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you 
your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father, which is in heaven, forgive so, so, So wait a minute. Now, what you that scripture may not have said to you, you can speak to the mountain and you can believe, but if you got unforgiveness, you just canceled out everything you was believing God for. Because, trust me, if you got art and you got bitterness and stuff, you ain't really, you're not really flowing so the anointing can really bless your life. Wow. So you got to forgive. Some of you all got to let go of some stuff. And I, I feel it. I feel it strong. It's some deep-rooted stuff that you're trying to cover up and you're trying to deny and say you, you're over it, but you're not. Come on. I feel it. I feel, I feel it strong. You've been saying it. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, I'm forgiven. Yeah, but how, how come... When I call the name, when I bring up the conversation, your spirit... Is on <coughs> It's according to your faith. But if your heart's not right and your heart not clean, you can forget our God doing anything for you in the way of blessing, the way you want. Now, he'll bless you because of the simple fact of grace and mercy. You get the general blessing, but you're not going to get the great big blessing until you really in your heart. And I don't know about y'all, I'm going for the great big blessing, so guess what? I'm going to keep my heart clean. Yeah. I'm working on me. I'm working on this. A whole lot of stuff that I just, I, you know what? Like I said, if I want to go to school to get my master's and my doctorate, I can't do the same things I did to get a bachelor's. This extra, this extra thesis work you got to do Matter of fact, you got to write a couple of them, I think, when you're going for the master's. It, just, it's totally, it ain't the same, because if that was the case, do you follow me? Yes. But it's according to your faith. It's according to your faith. I know I said some things in the spirit. I know I haven't been here in a while, but we're going to pick this up next week. I'm going to go deeper. I'm going to yes. go deeper, because y'all got to hear this. Y'all dealing with some stuff. I don't know what happened. While I was gone, because I know Pastor Burton and Elder Burton put it on me. I know they did. I know they put it on me. But, but y'all, in order for this ministry and for you, which are a part of the ministry, to go to the next level, you're going to have to do next level stuff. You're going to have to change some things that you're doing. And really move to another level in faith in God in order to see the results that God said you can have. It's not going to work. It's not going to work what you've been doing. Amen. What I've been doing. If we really want to see this place full, if we want to really, you know what, I'm believing God for, for our next location already. Yes. But y'all know that ain't going to happen because the enemy ain't going to just let me do it. He's right. gonna, and God, if God is going to let him mess with me too. He know I'm gonna win. We, he know we gonna move. You know, there's a building right outside the door that's for sale. That's right. Yes, it is. I rode by and I say, God, is that what you want? Just hold on, hold on. Yes, sir. But how many of y'all know if you're not in the right place, sometimes an opportunity will go right by you. You can't even see. It. And you sitting up worrying about Susie, Johnny, and all the stuff they did when God said, "I'm trying to get you to the blessing right there on the corner." You follow me? Yeah. See why you got to get your mind off a mess and get your mind on what God wants? Yeah. I'm trying to get y'all. Anybody want to go? Just come on. Yeah. But you have to clean your heart up. That's really, that's really why God wanted me to deal with this time. He wanted to get your heart. You got to go back and get your heart right. I preached that a few months ago. Y'all need to get that message and listen to it. All right, come on, stand up.